Hey YouTube, this is Pastor Anthony Williams from New Ransom Holy Temple. Thanks for joining our YouTube page. Feel free to browse and check out any other videos and we look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. You got to understand, hallelujah, that there is a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is death. Somebody better get that for me. Hallelujah. We're going to flip fast. Hallelujah. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. When I was in the world, I was living my best life. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Having a good old time. Huh? Just enjoying every moment. I, I will never tell you it was a miserable life of sins. Now, spiritually speaking, yes. Because I was separated from God. But in this flesh, I was having a good time. And I really struggled, hmm, right, making that transfer from having that type of fun, amen, to truly repenting and serving the living God. Hmm? The payoff just didn't seem that good, that pleasurable. Huh? Oh, I would still go to church if I was in at my parents' house, you know. I was there for the weekend when I was in school, college. But I, other than that, I didn't go. Hmm? You know, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wanted to stay far away from the fire because I was trying to live my best life. Hmm? And what was holding me back in my imagination, your imagination, your worst enemy, is all the preconceived loss, right? Of uh, all the preconceived loss that I'm going to have if I repent. Y'all remember last week we talked about straightway the disciples followed him. They were fishermen and the Lord bid them to come and follow him. And he would make them disciples and fishermen of men. And straightway, the Bible says they left their nets. They left their father and their hired servants to follow him straightway without counting up the costs. But in my mind, when the Lord called, I began to count my money. Hmm? Come on. Yeah. My social network, they going to think. I'm a square. I'm a loser, and I didn't lost it. Hmm. Okay. Oh, just going to church and then maintaining a sinful life ain't nobody gonna squawk at that. Right. But to truly, not just come to church, but sell out. Okay. How great that costs. Amen. Huh? Come on. That that cute girl. Amen. Man, God knows. We're not in the same space, right? Hallelujah. She likes to do other things, but I really want to sell out to God, but she's making it hard for me. Huh? Come on. Uh -huh. I had to count up the cost. Yes. Although the world makes it hard. Come on. Who was that group? Was it? Next, amen, they had this song, you're making it hard for me. Huh, hallelujah. I was an R&B king. Huh, they had that song, you're making it hard for me. Huh, come on, hallelujah. It was my vice. I, I ain't always been saved. And you know what? Some of y'all still listen to the same music I repented of 15 years ago. And you know, it's encouraging to me because when I pull up in the intersect, I'm like, I ain't missing nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's still the same. Yep. 
So when you let go, and then when you start looking back in retrospect, you be like, man, I ain't missing out on a thing. These people are still on this same loop. Huh? Ain't nothing new. And Solomon said it first. He said, ain't nothing new under the sun. Take what you will. It's a smorgasbord this morning. Huh? Ain't nothing new under the sun. But I was counting up. Is it going to be worth it? Is losing my life worth it? Give me that way. It seemed right real quick. Hallelujah. 14 and verse 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. Yes. But the end thereof are the ways of death. It seemed right because it's pleasure in it. It's fun. It makes the flesh feel good. So it seems right in this flesh. I got any witnesses. Amen. When you were out there, didn't it seem right in this flesh? It felt good. The atmosphere was good. The drinks were flowing if you were a drinker. Huh? Being around your friends that had the same mindset. You're so fresh and so clean. Amen. Come on, hallelujah. You got your smell good on. Everything just seemed right in the world. But in your that still voice, you know, huh? You know, you can't fool yourself. There's something not right. There's something wrong with this picture. What is that way? It seemed right, but it is a ways of death. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. I ain't teaching nothing that's new to some of us. 1 Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. One of y'all get a man, hallelujah, if you lose your life. You'll save it. Hallelujah. There is a way that seemeth right. Hmm? Hallelujah. It feels good. It sounds good. We tell ourselves, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. Come on. There's nothing wrong. As long as I believe in God, there's nothing wrong with how I'm living. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody ever had that mindset? Huh? Anybody ever had that mindset when you were in the street? Amen. Hallelujah. You didn't think that was wrong with your partying and your 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 banqueting, right? Amen. Your your liquor drinking. You didn't think nothing wrong with it as long as you believe that God was real. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, I've heard that in witnessing on the street. They will say right in the club line that I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. I believe in God. Well, why are you in this line? Why are you on this corner? Why are you about to go in there and dry hump on somebody else? Come on, I got some witnesses in this place. Come on. We're grinding. Hallelujah. Yes. Looking back in retrospect, amen. A room full of grinding. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yep. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Most of the time, I can't tell you what a girl looked like, but I can tell you what the back of her head did. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. I'm testifying. You can't judge me. That's my testimony. Right. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And we thought that was good. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Hallelujah. Won't nothing holy about it. 
Huh? All the thoughts going on in your mind. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It won't good, ladies. Y'all over here bugging. And we were thinking. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I wanted to be detailed because I want you to understand this ain't pretty. But repentance is worth it. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. We were doing our thing in there. Lusting. Having sex in our mind. Men, I don't want to speak. I ain't no woman. I don't know what y'all are thinking. That's what we thinking. Right. <laughs> and then we got to go to another place so we don't embarrass ourselves. Is that what I think I feel? Yes. Huh? Y'all, y'all ain't real. I'm talking about real this morning. Hallelujah. People want these in denial sermons. It's your season. They hating on you in the job, but you about to be promoted. And you going through all of this. Some, that was somebody's testimony last night. You need to come up out of it. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Right. Worried about the promotion and you over here doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Come on. And I got to think about lily pads and huh? hallelujah. And homework so I can keep my composure. Come on, men. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm going to move on. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's my testimony. Thank you, Jesus. We all got one. We're contemplating things right now. Thank you, Jesus. Is this worth it? Come on. The world don't come with the same convictions. Thank you, Jesus. But God is telling you, you got to cut some things off. But he, he's so handsome. She's so soft. She feels so nice. Come on. Hallelujah. Bishop, Whit, Bishop uh, not, uh, Deacon Williams, his favorite scripture, touch not, taste not, handle not. You got to keep your hands off. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because if not, you'll fall. Thank you. Okay. We, we, I'm teaching hard. I'm preaching hard. Hey Amen. Where you at, uh, Deacon? First, first Corinthians. Well, let's let's get the loss. Let's get this let's get this loss real quick. This loss of life. Matthew chapter sixteen, starting at verse twenty-four. Yeah, sixteen verse twenty-four. Sixteen twenty-four. Y'all flip there. I want y'all to get there. See, this is not popular, huh? Hallelujah, preaching. But the Bible declares that. Christ, God loves those whom he chastises. Amen. We wouldn't really serve a God that loves us if, if he didn't chastise us through the word. Thank you, Jesus. Because we're not going to get it in the street. Your job is never going to tell you if you don't quit going to that club and and doing this and drinking and yeah, you gonna we gonna fire you and you're going to hell. They, you ain't gonna hear that there. You think they care? Nope. Long as you don't bring it to the work campus, they will drink with you. Man, just talk about happy hour. And, huh? We gonna go out after this meeting if you want to meet us at this bar. Come on. We going to the, what is that place? The Double Piano, uh, uh, Bar Louis, and uh, it's another, but I don't know, no matter. But we going here for happy hour, and they'll drink with you. There's no condemnation there. Come on. Come on, we gonna swipe that company car too. Thank you, Jesus. Your, your job ain't going to fire you for having an affair with your co-worker. No. Mm-mm. They ain't going to fire you for that. Huh? They might, some may say that's messed up. But they ain't going to fire you. So we come to church because God is going to tell us the truth, y'all. Hallelujah. He's going to be transparent with us. Okay, let's get this. Let's get this. Straightway the disciples followed him. Straightway you should follow him. 
If you love Jesus, follow him. Yes. Drop your nets, your spiritual nets, your spiritual hangups, and follow Christ. Straightway. I don't care what nobody else is doing and saying. Let them go to hell by themselves. Amen. Okay. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew 16, 24. Uh-huh. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Then said who? Jesus. Jesus, the one we love. Uh-huh. If any man will come after me. If any man gonna what? Come after me. So any man that's gonna profess to be a Christian, to be a follower of Christ, uh-huh. Let him deny himself. Let him do what? Let him deny himself. Deny what? Sin. Deny himself. Look at somebody and say, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. You got to deny yourself. You got to deny yourself. Down to kids. You got to deny yourself being hard-headed. Huh? Amen. Amen. Kids, right? I deny myself being hard-headed because I don't want to get chastised. What's the chastisement? A spanking. Come on. Okay, let's keep going. And take up his cross. Take up what? And take up his cross. Yes. And follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. If I save, right? If I spare my life, if I say, you know what? Strip club ain't worth God. If I save my life, you know, club ain't a regular club. I went to the regular club. I won't spend no money on, on, on that. Nah. Nah. To tease me? Nah, I'm good. Huh? See, some of us ain't got that testimony. I laugh at Deacon Will. He's 6'4". People like, girls like them tall. I'm short. I have no value like that. I ain't taking nobody home. Nah, I'm just spending money. Come on. You can laugh. Y'all know it's true. He women, y'all don't like no short dude. Huh? Thank you, G. I'm just joking, y'all. Thank you, G. I'm joking, but I'm not joking. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? I want somebody taller than me and not just by an inch. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. So I won't I know that won't gonna be my reality. So I won't spend no money. Mm -mm, nah. But I did go to the regular place. Huh? And I, I said that was worth it at that time. Huh? I, I, I thought, you know, maybe collegiate sports would be worth it. I'm going with my testimony. You can't judge my testimony. Huh? See, I thought drinking a man was worth the sacrifice. Some of y'all have testimony. Anybody knew anybody in high school that died before they graduated? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Or just know people that died you thought before time. We all have that testimony. You got to count up the cost. So he said, if you do what? For whosoever will save his life mm -hmm. shall lose it. Yes. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Shall what? Shall find it. What is he talking about? He's talking about heaven, y'all. If you save, if you spare yourself so you can live in sin, you're going to die and go to hell. I just want to be as blunt as possible. Huh? But if you repent of sins, when you die, huh? we all got an expected end, you go to heaven. Come on, hallelujah. They ain't no live in sin and then go to a better place like these preachers allude to when people die and you go to these funerals. Go ahead. Anybody, anybody heard a lie preacher? Oh, yeah. If you have it, go to a funeral. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm speaking for myself. So can't nobody judge me. Huh? You go to these funerals, I knew the person. I knew how they died. They died in a drunk driving accident. They hit a tree and died. And the preacher will get up there and paint this fairy tale like they are resting in peace. And like they're smiling down. It ain't no down. It ain't no peace when you die and go to hell. The Bible declares, somebody better get it, there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Huh? Yeah. 
There's torment in hell. I wish everybody did go to a better place. For the Bible declares that God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. There's no, there's no pleasure in people dying and going to hell because God is not sending us to hell. Our sins send us to hell. Come on, y'all. God don't send people to hell. Sin does. Christ came to earth to free us from sin so he can take us back with him. We got this thing messed up. Go ahead. Huh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Calamity is our doing. Corruption is our doing. But the first person when corruption, calamity come, we, we say, why God? What do you mean, why God? Why man? Thank you, Jesus. Adam and Eve messed us up. Okay, where's this weeping and national of tears? Oh, let's finish what we got. Let's finish that. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. For what is a man profit uh -huh. if he shall gain the whole world yes. and lose his own soul? Yes. For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Yes. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with, with angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his work. God is coming back. You see that? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and die and lose his soul? What does it profit to be an Elon Musk and then die unsaved? Somebody else is going to live in your mansion, drive your car. Anybody uh, drive a pre-owned car? Anybody use car? Use, 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 use. That means it belonged to somebody else before you. And you don't know how you stumbled along that used car. They could have passed away. Amen. Come on. They could have worked overtime and two jobs to buy that car. Come on. And now they didn't move on. They gone wherever. And now you got, what are you saying? You strive for different things and somebody else is going to spend it, use it, and abuse it. So why exchange your soul for it? To gain all the success in the world and then die and lose your soul. And you're not even satisfied when you get it. Deacon Flores talked today, there's a, there's a thing that when you have checked all the boxes off, when you accomplish everything you want to accomplish, at the very top, you want to feel fulfillment. You know what? You never will without God. Because there is no peace and joy without him. The Bible declares that the peace of God surpasses all understanding. There is no completion without God. That's why people uh, chase after fulfillment. Maybe I'll do it if I bungee jump. Any bungee jumpers in here? <laughs> nah. Well, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> Any skydivers in here? But people will do that. Rich people, poor people, they are chasing fulfillment. Maybe if I risk my life climbing Mount Everest, hmm, I'll reach fulfillment. Anybody want to climb Mount Everest? You may die. You may pass dead bodies from the 1920s still frozen in time. But you're going to try your luck. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Look at somebody real quick and say, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Huh? You ain't sleep yet, but that, I know that flesh is fighting. That flesh is a mess. Come on. Okay. So the Bible tells us, what does it profit? The Lord is soon to come. What does it profit to die and gain the whole world and die and lose your soul? Okay. Uh-huh. Now let's, uh, let's rock out. First Corinthians. What else you got? Uh, huh? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get that out of the way, too. Thank you, Jesus. Look, we about to get 1 Corinthians. But let's get this weeper and Nash. I want to I wanna, uh, address these bootleg preachers that put everybody in heaven. Everybody in heaven. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. 
Everybody want this candy cane message. People are dying and, 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 and dying under unfortunate circumstances, but sin is no joke. People are dying and, and ODing on drugs, and they'll, they'll, they will hire a preacher that ain't going to preach on sin at the funeral. And he should be going in there, guns are blazing. Come out. Repent. Huh? Turn from the drugs. Turn from it. Thank you, Jesus. People are dying and are being lost. Don't play with the devil. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 13, verse 47. Yes. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast to the sea and gathered of every kind, mm -hmm. which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good to the vessels but cast the bad away. Mm -hmm. So shall it be at the end of the world. Y'all see that? What is, what, is the, what is the bad? The word. People are rejecting the word and keeping the sin. Uh-huh. The angels shall come forth and serve the wicked from among the just. Yes, y'all see that? That is the coming of the world, the, the, the Lord, and, and the end of the world when judgment comes. Uh-huh. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. Gonna cast them where? Into the furnace of fire. Share this with all your Jehovah Witness friends and family. Because they don't believe hell exists. Show them this. Uh-huh. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's gonna be what? Peace and joy. And they looking down in their sins. Wailing and gnashing of teeth. Is the Bible right? Amen. You die in sin, you go to hell. I'm not preaching that people, are, see, the flesh will do that. <laughs> see, you can hear stuff coming back to you even before you post it. <laughs> we live on something maybe, but. Hmm? You sending people to hell, you're judging. I ain't judging, I'm warning. If you die in sin, you go to hell. If you are alive right now, repent, and that won't be your fate. Amen. Did I clean that up? Amen. Come on, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible declares it. He's going to separate the wicked from the righteous. And he places the wicked who did not want to live right. They, their whole life, when you cast your net, you say, I don't want no word. I don't want no repentance. No thank you. No, no church for me. Huh? Give me some spiritual stones and rocks. Give me some tarot cards. Huh? Come on. Let me pray to Mother Earth. Like, we'll take anything that ain't going to rebuke sin. Huh? Let me pray to Buddha. Come on. Let, let, me, let me chase the God money. We all have be, been beholding the, the God of money at some point. Let me chase the bag. Come on. Amen. And the Lord's saying, and you reject the bad part, which ain't really bad, but you reject it. He said, you gonna, I'm going to pay you. Pay they coming. Okay, let's go. Where we at? First Corinthians. Amen. Let the Bible talk to you this morning. First Corinthians chapter six. What is, there's a way that seemeth right. Let, I just want to show you something. This is some ways that seem right, but the end thereof are death. This is why we preach being born again so fervently. This is why we preach being reconciled and turn back to God. Okay, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, so you can't blame it on the preacher for being judgmental. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not what? Inherit the kingdom of God. Inherit the kingdom of God. Uh-huh. 
Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't let your flesh deceive you. Don't let mama and daddy deceive you. Don't let friends deceive you. Don't let a situation deceive you. Because can't situations deceive us? We can fall on hard times or disappointing times and we'll, instead of praying, we'll revert to something that's not of God to, to release, to feel something, to, to be satisfied. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't even let a situation deceive you. People will go through, amen, and they'll go to pills, they'll go to anything else. But I challenge you to try Jesus. Be not deceived. Uh-huh. Neither fornicators. Fornicators not going. It's, it's, I mean, it's, feel, it's good. But you can't make it there. That's right. We know what a fornicator is. Maybe if you don't know what a fornicator is. Sex before marriage. Mm -hmm. Look these definitions up. That's all it takes. A little definition. Webster. It ain't going in. But we love each other. Huh? You, well, you better repent or get married. You only got two options. Well, I ain't married to get married. Well, you better repent and come out of it. Hmm? Amen. Amen. Well, you just don't get married for sex. That, that may be true. But it's better to do that than to go to hell. <laughs> the Bible declares it's better to marry than to burn. Hello. Huh? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's, that's a, 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 a good portion of the reason you should be getting married. Well, I love, I'm love. i in love with her psychological profile. and Boy, stop. Huh? I'm going to move. I'm not going to digress too much. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. Nor idolaters. Nor idolaters. Anything you put to equal or greater value than God. Huh? Equal or greater value than God, not just serving other gods. Yes, we know that's idolatry. Anybody worship Zeus? No, anybody? No, no, nobody. Nah. But that ain't the only idolater that you can define idolaters with. Hey, man, idolation is anything that you put the equal or greater value to God. Again, people will put sleep, they will prioritize sleep. Over God. Uh, it's too early. I worked all week. I, ain't, I can't get up and go to church. Huh? Come on. Oh, uh, I gotta. I, I'm, I, I need to clean the house. And this is really the only day I'm, I'm gonna do it. I need to wash the car. Come on. All this stuff people do. I'm going to the gym. We put everything. We'll idolize stuff real quick, y'all. Huh? Whatever. Uh, I'm going swimming today. I'm not even making this stuff up. This is stuff that people have told me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. You can't make this stuff up. And so people are idolizing the wrong things. Huh? Hallelujah. Especially that money. Money is a, is a mighty God. Huh? Money will say, you working uh, 80 hours this week, and you're going to be like, yes, money. Huh? Money say, oh, you're going to travel 50 minutes for this one. Yes, money. Anybody have co-workers that drive 50 minutes to an hour one way to work? Huh? You know why? Because the God of money is saying, oh, you're going to do this if you want me. Oh, you're going to do that. Oh, yeah. When it comes to God, how far is it? Oh my gosh. You guys are on the other side of the Metroplex. Huh? But you ain't, you ain't going to say that on Monday. Amen. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. People ain't saying that when, when uh, cow, Cowboy Games, are we going to the stadium? People will make it their business to drive to different states where their team is going to be playing. We're talking about eternity, y'all. I want y'all to understand eternity. When you're standing before God, your life is rushing before your eyes. I don't know if that's going to be a real thing. 
is 40 is I'm not saying anybody driving 45 minutes, but is is 40 what would that at that point it'll be too late. But at that point, you, and when you thinking about eternity, 45 minutes seems so significant, insignificant. Huh? Come on, hallelujah. All this stuff that was so important, it just, man, it won't. It's too late. Okay, idolaters. Nor adulterers. Nor adulterers, right? Yeah, married people having sex outside of marriage. Or and or double married. They've been married multiple times. First one don't work out. The Bible don't con condemn separating, but you have to remain as you are. You can't separate and then go get a second one. Right? Because you're under the yoke of marriage until the first one dies. Now don't go be poisoning no drinks. Hmm? That's murder. Huh? Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Huh? No adulterers. That's not going in. Nope. Ain't going. And there's a whole lot of preachers that's been double married. That's a whole lot of preachers that were double married folks. Huh? That happened to me one time. Dude pulled up and said, I want to get married to uh, my girlfriend and stuff. I said, all right, let me counsel you real quick. <laughs> See, we make marriage counseling and you know, there's some other stuff to it, but I said, let me, let, me, let me do a quick interview real quick because they want to do it right now. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's go. Hold on. Hold, but hold on. He about to run back to the car to get her. I said, hold on, man. Pump your brakes. Come back. <laughs> huh? Have you been married before? Nah, man. I ain't never been married. Has she been married before? Uh, yeah, she been married before. You know, you got to do marriage genealogy nowadays. Yeah. I said, okay. She been married before. Now, the guy that she married... Was that their first marriage together? Yeah, that was their first marriage together. I said, well, she already married. You can't have her. That's right. You got to do that, y'all. You got to ask them type of question. Yeah. Huh? I know people that married to a person that they've been divorced from a wife, but that wife had a husband before that person. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get divorced at all. Nope. You won't ever marry. Right. But this is what we're talking about. This is what's at stake. Adultery. Hmm? I feel like adultery, I got to massage that one. I, you can feel this stuff coming back to you. Y'all get adultery real quick, real quick. I don't want to wear your patience too long. Thank you, Jesus. We ain't going to get a definition for all this stuff, but let's get some, let, let's get what, let's just get what, how Paul addressed it to the church. We're going to get it how Paul looked. Because this came up. As a matter of fact, it came up in the Corinthian church. And I'm going to show you how it was addressed in the Corinthian church. Jesus addressed it too. He did. For the sake of time, we're going to streamline this. We're going to get it. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you're not going to believe Paul, you might as well just stop reading the Bible. Because the apostles wrote what you read. Amen. All right, so where we at? Keep your finger on, uh, because we're going back to 6, chapter 6. But Just look over to chapter 7, 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. starting at verse 10. Uh, actually, let's just start at 9. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. All right. Read. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it, for it is better to marry than to burn. See, I, I, I didn't just say that. The Bible says if you can't contain, if you can't stop fornicating, if you can't stop doing that, just get married. Right. Well, I'm not in a position to get married. To will repent. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's it. Huh? Come on. All right, let's go. Verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Not I, but who? But the Lord. Yes. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Uh-huh. But, and if she depart. So there is no sin to depart. Uh-huh. Let her remain unmarried. But they have to remain what? Unmarried. Unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband. To a second one. To her husband. To a third one. To her husband. To her husband. It is still her husband. Even if you're separated, don't be trying to front. I'm single. 
Mm. No, you're not. <laughs> Me and my husband, we've been separated for years. Nah, it's still yours. Huh? Come on. Let's keep going. And let not the husband put away his wife. Let not the husband put away his wife. They're both under the same yoke. Yep. Don't be trying to be out here friend. Nah, I'm single. No, you're not. You married just because you took your ring off. I ain't even got a ring. I lost mine. I said, forget it. I ain't buying another one of them. Somebody want to know, I just tell them. <laughs> People say, oh, you just trying to be this. I know I'm not. You married? Mm hmm. That's it. <laughs> well, <laughs> what you ring at? Why you, I just told you. <laughs> I'm married. Thank <laughs> you, Jesus. Huh? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we go back. So the Bible's right, right? Amen. The Bible's right. It says, stay as you are. If you go and get another one, you're in adultery. That's it. Somebody got to tell you. Somebody got to tell you the truth. Go ahead. Huh? Okay. We'll keep going. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're back there again. And we'll finish off verse 9. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. Nor abusers of themselves of mankind. Y'all know what that is, right? Homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Effeminate. A man, right, that wants to act like a girl. Mm -hmm. Abuses of themselves of mankind. Men with men. Women with women. Working that which is unseemly. Romans chapter 1. Huh? That's what that's talking about. See, homosexuality ain't the only thing. See, see, some churches, they'll get behind homosexuality. But let's talk about this adultery. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. Well, a lot of church houses don't want to talk about that. The preacher will wear out some faggots. Okay. But he on his second one. Mm -hmm. He double married people. He officiate that. Sin. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. No thieves. Anybody thief? Can I trust you? I'm just playing, y'all. Uh-huh. No covetous. No covetous. Covetous, right? The Bible says love not the world. Don't covet the world. Don't lust after. Don't desire after material things. We need it, but we don't covet after it. If, if lust is to desire someone else, covet is to desire, you know, material things. Right? You can covet after possessions like it is your singular focus. It comes before all else. I got to have it. And if I don't have it, I'm not happy. More people will be happy if they stop coveting. More people will feel satisfied if they stop coveting. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Y'all should go check out the YouTube page. The grass ain't, the, beware of green grass. Not all grass is greener. Oh, I wish I was, I wish I was married. I wish I had that. I wish I had that big house. You don't know what went into that. That's right. Go ahead. You don't know how much work it takes to maintain that. Stop coveting stuff, right? You have no clue about. Preach. Hmm. Run your race. We just read it. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Come on. Oh, I would love to. You don't know what's going on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You don't see the sacrifice. Right? Some of y'all see the building, but you don't see the sacrifice it takes to or took to get it. Huh? The eight hours that went into it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We were out here all day yesterday. That's what it takes. Right? This is what it takes. It takes all of you to serve God. Huh? We just getting started. Women, we, as men, we're going to be busy. Huh? Right? Hallelujah. But it, it, it takes that to serve God. You got to sell out to serving him. Okay, let's keep going through this list real quick. No drunkards. Yes, drunkards. Do we got to explain that? People to drink alcohol. That's what that means. Yep. To drink alcohol. That's what a drunkard is. Yep. One that drinks. that drinks. One that drinks. That's what it means. 
You drink alcohol, you are a drunkard. You don't have to be inebriated to be a drunkard. It means you drink alcohol. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. No revilers. No revilers. No extortioners. Y'all know what revile is, one that speaks evil, right? Evil communication coming out of your mouth. Huh? Come on. Anybody using dirty jokes in here? Amen. That's a reviler. You put your mouth on people. Amen. You speak evil, you slander them. Reviler. Any good cussers in here? Reviler. Huh? It ain't going. That ain't going. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you got to cut it out. Uh-huh. No extortioners. Yeah, deceiver, you know, get over on people, deceive them, swindle them. Bernie Madoff, he was an extortioner, right? Deceiving people out of their money, goods, and things. Uh-huh. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Uh-huh. Yeah, it won't go in. Y'all see that? But there's a way that seems right. To some of us, it seemed right to do those things. But the Bible says it won't inherit the kingdom of God. I like verse 11. We ain't going to conclude it with that verse 10. Verse 11 reminds us, uh-huh. And such were some of you. And such what? Were some of you. I'm looking at some X somethings. You ain't looking at somebody that was always saved. Mm -hmm. That's right. And some of those things that you were delivered from every now and then they just come to say hey I'm checking in on you I'm checking in on you huh come on see when you're a single man you can't keep your hands off a woman it was fornication so you got married to get rid of it and then you thought you would be done and neutralized and then here come adultery Go ahead. huh huh right thank you Jesus I thought that was going to get rid of the attract. No, you're a man. That's right. That's how you're built. I ain't saying you're built to lust. I got to clean this up. Huh? But in the natural order of things, men are attracted to women and women are attracted to men. Right? But you got to keep it holy. You don't act on every attraction. You can acknowledge a person is handsome and not want to hit on them. Right? Amen. Right? Yes. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Okay. So, we'll keep going. And such were some of you. Yes. But ye are wise. But ye are what? Wise. Yes. But ye are sanctified. Yes, he set you apart. He sanctified you. He said, I made you clean, you're holy. Uh-huh. And but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Through the Holy Ghost. You see that? Through Jesus Christ, by his Spirit, ye are washed, ye are clean through his name. You have to be an ex this. When you are truly delivered, you become a ex sinner. Well, nobody's perfect. I ain't saying nobody's going to be perfect. But that don't mean sin has to be a part of your imperfection. Because you don't accidentally sin. That's premeditated. My imperfection is I forget things. I can oversleep from time to time. I could fix something and it breaks. That is human imperfection. But you don't accidentally, huh? Go ahead. <laughs> you don't accidentally fall into somebody's bed. How did I get here? Oh my gosh. Right? It started with a, hey, how are you? Huh? And not no regular hey, how do you, you know what I'm saying? What's up? Yep. That's how it started. Huh? It didn't start with the bed. It, it started and ended really with that phone call. Mm -hmm. You know it was too late to be making that phone call. Huh? It get past 10 o'clock. It's going to get strange real quick. Mm -mm. Come on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You start saying stuff and then you get up the next morning like, man, what did I say? That happened to me when I was younger one time. Staying up too late, so I'm talking to this chick. Next thing you know, I woke up with a girlfriend. I'm like, nah, I don't want no girlfriend. 
<laughs> I'm gonna be tired now. Hold on. <laughs> any witness y'all y'all looking at me I'm a witness thank you Jesus but washed and this is why we preach this is why we preach what we preach so I'm going to conclude this is why you must be born again of what the water and the spirit John chapter 3 except the man be born again of water and spirit you cannot enter the kingdom of God right Sinner's prayer won't save you. If you grew up in a church that said a sinner's prayer is what saves you, acknowledging you're a sinner and believing in your heart and you're on your way to heaven, that is not true. Yeah. He's calling people to be baptized in water and to be baptized with the Holy Ghost to purge you of sin. Matthew 28, 19, real quick, and then we're going to get Acts chapter 2, verse 38. If you have not been baptized, and I want to be real specific, because baptism is for the washing away of sin. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, if you were baptized in titles, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let me repeat this again, because I don't know nobody's background. If you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and were baptized, right? That's what the preacher said. You need to get baptized. Because that is not a biblical baptism. That is a man-made baptism. Started by the Catholic Church. Huh? And then branched off in the Protestant movement into the Baptists. The Baptists do it. The Methodists do it. The Lutheran do it. Come on. The AME do it. The Church of God in Christ do it. The Church of Christ do it. Hmm? Come on. All these other ones do it. The mode of worship may be different, but they all hold the same baptism. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, baptism. Not in the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all in the name of Jesus, not in the Bible. They only did it in the name of Jesus. If you want your sins washed away, you found yourself in this list we just read. You have to be washed in the name of Jesus. Okay, Matthew 28, 19. Jesus said it. He instituted it. Now, this is where preachers think they get their baptism from. Now, we won't break down a baptism today. But we'll break it down. Amen. Hallelujah. At another point. But this is going to break it down. If you believe your Bible, let it talk to you. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. See, this is why people got to come to church during the week and t even Sunday evening. You can break this stuff down. You can get fed more. People want this one quitter, one quitter hitter type of stuff. Thank you, Jesus. When the devil is saying, I'm ready for you. As soon as you hit the door, I'm ready. And I'm going to be on you all week long. You need as much God as you can get. Yep. Jesus. The, the devil never let up. Y'all remember, it was like the club knew your college schedule. Yep. College night, Wednesday night. It was like, how do you know I only got one class tomorrow? <laughs> how do you know that? One of Wednesday night, they have a Wednesday night or Thursday night club night for college ID, get in for like, I don't know, cheap. Dang. Midweek devil service. The club. That's what I'm talking about. They get you midweek and then they catch you on a, a Saturday. You know you're going to do something on a Saturday. Man, you were, you were, <laughs> the devil had you engaged all week long. And if you didn't want to go to a club, you can find you a house party. You ever been in a house party? It, the house was so packed, the center of the room was sinking. I'm like, man, they didn't broke the floor. I could feel myself being pulled in the middle of the floor. I'm like, on the wall, like, they didn't broke the floor. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's get Matthew 28. 
Go ye therefore and What enter. verse you at? Oh, 28-19. Alright. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Yes, you seen it? You see that? He said, look, teach all nations. Teach them. Teach them what they should do. Teach them to repent. Teach them these things. And when they are ready to have their sins washed away, baptize them, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What is the name, though? He said he didn't say repeat titles. He said baptize in the name of the Father. So what did they actually go and do? Did they repeat titles or did they actually baptize in the name? Acts chapter two, verse 36. This is where we see them fulfill the commission that he gave. This is the fulfillment. Acts chapter six, two, I mean, in 36. Let the Bible talk to you. Look, if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus and you want to go to heaven, you should do this. You need to come on down. To, uh, what's the address, y'all? 2313 Handley Drive. Still too new. You still smell the paint. 2313 Handley Drive, Fort Worth, Texas. Come on. Hallelujah. Even if you're out of state, you should come. People will fly, get a plane ticket, and go to Joel Osteen Church to be lied to. Yeah. I'm from North Carolina. I came here to hear Joel Osteen deliver his speech. Amen. Amen. Okay, Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom he had crucified, both Lord and Christ. Yes. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Yes. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Look, this is the altar call. Men and brethren, what shall we do? What must we do to be saved? This is the altar call. They were pricked of their sins. Verse 38. Uh-huh. Then Peter said unto them, uh -huh. Repent. Repent. Look, he knew what to do because he got the commission from Jesus in Matthew 28, 19. So it says what? Repent. 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 Turn. Uh-huh. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. I thought I was supposed to be Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Name of Jesus Christ. Maybe Father, Son. Jesus Christ. Maybe Father, Son, Holy Ghost, all in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. For what? For the remission of sin. For the remission of what? Sin. You get baptized in Jesus' name for the forgiveness of sins. So if you found yourself in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you should be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of those sins. But you got to do it in his name. You can't just say, Lord, I'm sorry. You got to get go down in his name. And when you come up out of that pool, you rise in the newness of life. This is why you feel different when you are baptized in Jesus name coming up out of that water, because it literally is removing your sins, not the water, but the obedience. Come on. This is why when you when you are coming out of that water, the Lord will be all on you. All you got to do is just let go. Thank you, Jesus. He concludes and says what? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Is the Bible right? What is the Holy Ghost? The Spirit of God on the inside. So when you, when you are changed, when you are really walking in deliverance, it's not you, it's the Spirit of God walking in you. Because if you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it's not me. You have such great willpower, brother, sister. Oh, it's not me. It's the spirit in me. Amen. Come on. Oh, you, you got great discipline. 
No, it is the Holy Ghost in me. I know what it looked like to not have discipline. I know what it looked like to not be consistent. I know what it looked like to put things before God. But when you receive the Holy Ghost, he changes you because it's not you doing it. It's the Lord through you. So stop trying to do it on your own because your self-righteousness is filthy rags. It don't mean a thing. And start doing it through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the altar call. Huh? Well, preacher, I'm not convinced. Well, you don't believe the Bible. You see what he did? They were where they baptized in Jesus name because who is the father? Jesus. They did it in the name of the father because Jesus is the father. Jesus is the son. Jesus is the Holy Ghost, that comforter that would come and dwell in you. That's why they did it in that singular name. Because he is Jesus. Jesus is the Father. Yes. Well, I don't know about that. What about the Trinity, preacher? You're going to have to come back for that one. Huh? There is no Trinity. That's why people baptize that way, because they believe it's more than one. There ain't no Trinity. Can't have a Trinity, and then they deduce it down to Jesus. That will be some beefs in heaven. There will be some beefs in heaven, y'all. Yeah. Didn't, didn't Lucifer try to be equal to God? What God say? Nah, you got to get up out of here. Yeah. Right. Yep. There ain't no equals in heaven. It's just God, and his name is Jesus. Right. That's it. Hallelujah. You got to come back for that one. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for the word. Obey the word. Amen. Obey the word. It is a lamp unto your feet. That's right. Let it lead and guide you. I make the altar call. There'll be someone. That have not been baptized in Jesus' name. You can come now or you can meet me at the church. I know, I know how it is. Sometimes you don't want to just, but whatever you do, you should, you should think about it. If you haven't been baptized with the Holy Ghost, you should do it. Some have been baptized in Jesus' name, but you have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. There's room at the altar. Amen. If you so come. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.